Today I'm taking a look at the Timmy M7. This is an affordable larger screen Android phone. I'll show you quickly what you get included in the pack. We have some instructions. There is a dual pull 3 pin UK USB charger, a micro USB cable, you get a headset included with a microphone, the handset itself, there is a separate battery included here. This is rated to 2500 milliamps an hour and we have a case and an additional screen protector included. Taking a closer look at the handset, when you take it out of the box you have a sticker that's included on the front here. You can just peel that off, it shows you the functions and locations of the buttons. Flipping it over onto the back, we will see we have two SIM slots here as a standard size and a micro SIM as well as a micro SD slot. The camera here is an 8 megapixel and at the bottom we have the speaker grill. Around the trim the bezel is metal although most of the phone is plastic it feels quite solid. There's a 3.5mm jack here and a micro USB port for charging. The controls here are the volume and on the other side we have the power button here. The back cover is plastic, you can just clip that back on, that's removable. There's a small groove at the top here where you can flick it off. You'll notice beneath the camera we also have an LED light which helps for low light pictures and video and you can use it as a torch as well. The display on the M7 is IPS, so that means that's got pretty good viewing angles. It's a 1280 by 720 so it's not as high as some of the more expensive phones but it's still reasonably decent. Just moving that around you see there's a bit of uh, reflection on the screen but in terms of the detail and resolution and colors it's, it's pretty good really. You'll notice at the bottom here we have illuminated navigation buttons you can also dive into the settings. Go into the settings now and turn on the breathing light option. You'll see that the home key breathes. Okay, so I ran the phone through a few benchmarks and it came out quite well actually. Um, on Geekbench, we got 2015. Once you get over the 2000 mark, that's more than satisfactory for a phone of this price. And I tested out the camera, took a few shots inside and out just to see how it performed. This one was done without the LED flash, but it's in somewhat lower light and it didn't come out too bad actually. The rear camera is not bad at all. Bit of noise reduction and some loss of details. I needed to try and keep it steady, but um, it, it did a reasonable job on this particular shot here. Color balance is also quite good. Outside, details are reasonable for the megapixel resolution of the camera. There's a bit of mushiness in the shadow areas as you'd expect but the exposure was pretty good um, not really much to complain about for the price point you wouldn't expect a massively impressive camera on a phone of this price it goes for around about 70 pounds odd but it's not too bad outside and in reasonable light it's um, it's certainly possible for social media shots and things like that Overall thoughts and conclusion with the M7, I think for the asking price which currently at the time of review is around about £70, you get quite a good phone for the money really. There are a few areas where things have been cut down a bit as you would expect at this price point. You have 1GB of RAM and 8GB of storage, 
but that's still up to a respectable level. Fortunately, you have a decent processor in there. The um, eight core MediaTek does a good job and actually outperforms a lot of the big name brands at uh, higher price points. 